everyone. My name is Pauline Dan and welcome to the Limited Edition Leadership Show. I am a cognitive scientist and human performance expert, and today I would love to introduce you to Jack Pye, who is the owner and director of Vision Personal Training Stanmore. Welcome, Jack. How are you going? Hi, hi. Good to be here. Now, Jack, who is our guru in health and fitness, um, give us a bit of an idea about what's currently happening in the, the fitness industry in terms of um, in the world now. And that's impacting the social, with our social isolation. Yeah, so I guess um, at the moment, obviously, all gyms are closed. Mm. Uh, and for a lot of people, I think the struggle has been um, losing their routine. So, um, you know, you might have had your regular sessions with your trainer before and after work or whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, that's sort of been turned upside down and, and, and gyms are closed now, which is throwing a lot of people off. Mm. Um, you know, we're staying at home. Uh, all day now we're not really allowed outside uh, besides to exercise and I think the biggest struggle people have, have have found during this time is is adapting and finding a new routine that actually works and being motivated to find a new routine that works within this new you know um, isolation period where, where everything's been turned upside down yeah yeah, I know. I know because, I mean, um, I actually train with Jack and um, I've had to go into isolation as well. And so it's it's been a new experience for me having to, um, yeah, try and be good and but still kind of binging on the, all the crap and the snacks. And yeah. So, so, yeah, so I've been a little bit naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so what actions can we take to minimise um, the impact of the social isolation? Um, on our, especially with our mental health and you know what, what we're doing right now. Yeah, so there's definitely a few things we can do to, I guess, try and minimise the impact. I think if we're, I think step number one is be realistic about your expectations too. So like, you know, it's a tough time for everyone. It doesn't mean that we can do certain things that are going to make it super easy for us. But I think there are things that we can do to to minimise the the impact that it's going to have on us, right? So, and you know, keeping it simple. So I think step number one. Um, is, is try and limit your time on social media. Again, because we're home a lot more now, mm. uh, well, what I've been seeing, and even for myself, is I'm finding myself on social media a lot more, um, which is not always a good thing. You know, they say that comparison is the thief of all joy. And, you know, there's just so many, mm. so much different, like, advice. And, and you've got your fitness models and fitness influencers on, on Instagram. And I think one of the things I can do for myself is trying to reduce the time I'm spending on those apps. Because, I mean... A lot of the times, these fitness models and, and influencers on Instagram, their their job is to to look the part all the time, and I think it creates a, an unrealistic expectation of what um, we need to be um, looking like all the time. And I know, Paula, you work a lot with um, teenagers, right? And mm. we know what teenagers are like with social media and 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 expectations of what their body should look like. So, um, and a lot of the times, what what happens is they're they're, they're cookie cutting um, food plans and and training plans to thousands of people in mm. in the hopes of them uh, looking like them one day. When really it's not a it's not a one size fits all, and if anything, that can become quite negligent too. So mm. um, I guess I, I in my career at Vision, I guess I've been lucky to um, train a few teenagers myself. Most of the time, it's it's uh, daughters and sons of, of the parents that I've been training for years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think I think one of the main reasons that they, they bring their kids in is to... Because they're not going to listen to their parents, right? Like no, no one does. So no. having someone else in the industry actually kind of debunk those myths in terms of what's, what's healthy and what's not um, has, been, has been massive for the teenagers that I train at the moment. So I guess in short, yeah, social media, try and limit the time. Mm. Like I know a lot of phones now actually have like trackers and timers on how much time you're spending on, on social media. So even trying to reduce that by, say, 10 minutes a week is a good start. Again, be realistic mm. with it. Like, I know I'd be lost without, without my Instagram and Facebook. So, yeah. um, you know, it's not about cutting it out. It's just about reducing the amount of time that we're on it too. Mm. Um, so I guess there's, there's one. Another yeah. one would be trying to, trying to plan your week and your days in advance if you can. So what I mean by that is, like, um, have a start time. Have your break times planned out as well. So then you've got your work, your work blocks, and then your break blocks as well. Have your eating times planned. Just like you were, if you were at school, you would you would do the same thing, right? You have your yeah. blocks of school, then you have your your recess, and then your lunch blocks in there as well. So they're your eating times, and then have your finish time as well. So and try and stick to that as much as possible. So what that does is it gives us a sense of routine again, mm -hmm. um, and it, it usually increases productivity as well. So we're not 
you know, mucking around over here with something, get distracted by that. This is our work time. We're going to do our work now. And then we stop when, uh, when our, our finish time comes around as well. And the same with your exercise, like be realistic with that too. Plan it in into your schedule, but be realistic with it. You don't have to do a massive hit session every day or a three-hour walk um, on the weekend mm. um, to be fit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even if it's a 20-minute walk every second day, that's, that's a great start to, to, you know, dealing with, you know, the, the stress and anxiety of, um, one, what's going on, but also if the teenagers are going through their, their HSC as well, mm-hmm. that's already a stressful time uh, enough as it is. So uh, reducing, um, I guess, releasing the endorphins that exercise gives us, it, it's going to help reduce the anxiety and, I guess, allow them to manage it better through this period, yeah. Yeah, wow, yeah. And, um, yeah, what are the, what's the third tip that you might have Third tip, I'd say, uh, with the food as well, um, yeah. again, not blanketing everyone, but I've, what I've seen a lot more of is people are with, they're snacking more often mm. uh, and we're getting more takeaway foods more regularly as well. So my tip would be, you know, pick a day or two in a time where you actually plan to have what most people would call a cheat meal or, or a takeaway meal, whatever it's going to be. And I find you actually enjoy it more when you when you have those times where you where you book in like almost like booking in those times where you're going to buy those types of foods and then you're not having them all the time but um, you find you enjoy it more and in those other times where you're not that, that isn't planned yeah. you're you're trying to add in more veggies and fruits and it makes that that cheap meal or that that takeaway meal much more enjoyable but less frequently as well you're, you're going to be having them so yeah. it's all about planning ahead right one of my favorite quotes quotes is um if you if you're failing to plan you're planning to fail that's true. And I think now in this time, it's, it's so important to be just taking a, taking an hour even just to sort of plan all those things ahead and, you know, have things in place that you can try and follow the best the best you can. You're never going to follow it perfectly, but no. as long as there's like a rough sort of, you know, skeleton of a plan, we can try and stick to that as best we can. Yep. I think that's going to help a lot, yeah. Yeah. No, they're really great tips, Jack. Thank you so much for um, your insight into how we can improve our our healthy lifestyle and mental health whilst being at home and in isolation. So, yeah, yeah. So if people are interested to, to, know, to learn more about what you do and how they can maintain their fitness, um, where can we find you? Yeah, so the few ways you can find us. Um, <laughs> one is our website. So it's www.visionpt.com.au forward slash studios forward slash Stanmore. Uh-huh. Um, we've also got our Facebook and our Instagram accounts as well, talking about social media. So that's just, just search Vision Stanmore and we'll pop up. Um, or I guess you could call or message me on 0450-770-639 if you'd like some more information or advice on on anything fitness, health and fitness related, I guess, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And um, if you didn't get all that, you can al- always ask me because, you know, I train with Jack, so <laughs> I can vouch <laughs> and see how I say how awesome he is and um, <laughs> the Vision PT studio as well. Uh, yeah, look, it's been an honour and a pleasure to have you on the show today, Jack. Uh, thank you so much. And, um, and, and don't forget, folks, if you've enjoyed this segment, Please like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to be you, have courage and live life without limits.